how to live better with arthritis. And this is something that I do every single day. I teach, you know, patients, my patients, how to live better with arthritis. And for those of you that don't know me, and I know a few of you know me, but for those of you that do not know me, I'm a physician. I am board certified in internal medicine and rheumatology. I have a doctorate in immunology and I completed a fellowship at Harvard University, one in immunology transplantation at University of Pittsburgh. And my rheumatology fellowship was completed at University of Cincinnati. Uh, further on, when um, I was working with patients, I realized that there is so much need to learn more. So that's why I took a, a nutrition science course at, at Stanford University and also a mindfulness course at University of Massachusetts. But, you know, um, I don't usually talk about all of my degrees. Um, I do see myself also as a mother of three kids, a wife, and, you know, I am also a patient. And um, I do like to tell you that every day I'm seeing patients with arthritis. This is the majority of my practice, patients with arthritis and patients with autoimmune diseases. And I do listen to their stories. I do listen to the fact that they are in pain or they struggle with pain or they struggle with morning stiffness. And I try to help them as much as I can. Many of these patients, they do become depressed because they cannot keep up with their families. They cannot keep up with the activities that they enjoy. And that is causing a lot of stress on, on, uh, on the patient's uh, family, but also on the patient's mind. So I would like to talk to you first about those five myths that I I hear all the time in my practice and I call them the five myths about arthritis. And I'm gonna start with the first one. You know, many, many people, many people that do not, um, do not deal with arthritis, they think that arthritis affects only elderly adults. And this is not true because, you know, in the United States, about 54 million people are living today with arthritis and more and more people will, um, will develop arthritis over the next 20 to 30 years. And out of those people, about 7%, they develop arthritis at a young age. And about 30%, they develop arthritis between 45 and 64 years of age. But 50% of people that are over 65 years of age, they develop a type of arthritis. And unfortunately, more common, um, more common forms of arthritis are seen in females than in males. And if you have to spread around the type of arthritis, about 1.5 million of people have rheumatoid arthritis, 3.2 million people have ankylosing spondylitis, but my belief is that these numbers are higher than what it is reported because many patients with ankylosing spondylitis, they are very late recognized to have that. And especially females, they end up seeing the doctors very late in, in life or in the process of the disease. And that's why the diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis or psoriatic arthritis, which is also a form of ankylosing spondylitis, is way, way under-recognized. And about 32 million people develop what we call the wear and tear arthritis or the osteoarthritis. So if you look at these numbers, not only young, not only old adults, but also young adults, they develop arthritis. The second myth is that there is nothing I can do about my arthritis. You know, once you get the diagnosis, a lot of patients will come to me and say, um, I don't think there is anything I can do for arthritis. And I have to say to them that that's not true. This is a myth. You can do a lot of things for your arthritis. And I start talking to them, you know, about the fact that yes, arthritis is a chronic disease. Yes, we cannot cure arthritis, but there are so many things that you can do to improve your arthritis and especially the pain generated by arthritis. And I talk to my patients about diet, about exercise, about sleep and about stress and how all these lifestyle choices that we make actually impact arthritis to a, to a 
big level to a high degree. And um, the other myth is that diet doesn't influence arthritis. This is another myth again. And I talk to my patients about different ways. You know, medication is needed many times. Uh, and, you know, I'm not going to downplay the role of medication. But many physicians in our days do not talk to patients about lifestyle choices or or lifestyle medicine, I call it um, a lifestyle medicine. We also call it integrative medicine. So that's why I want to educate myself and I took this nutrition science course. And if you have the, the option, do it because it's gonna teach you so many things, but I wanted to be educated myself. Now, there is a huge correlation between you know the pain and the way that our brain sees the pain, uh, but also the gut. You know, I talk to patients many times about this, you know, vicious cycle. If you have inflammation in the gut, that will cause um, an autoimmune disease and that will cause more pain and that could potentially cause an autoimmune arthritis. But if you are stressed, that is also linked to your gut and your gut will, will develop inflammation and you know that will affect the immune system. So our body needs to be seen as a whole. It cannot be seen just pieces and we cannot treat just pieces. And that's what I emphasize all the time to my patients because they are not one, you know, one disease or they are not a patient with a disease. They are a a person or they are people, they're not diseases. And, you know, many times I talk to them about what they eat. And I do explain to them that there are many studies that show that food, and this is more uh, an extreme example, but food that is ultra processed or uh, food that is chemically, you know, change will increase the weight of patients. And this is just a study uh, from probably hundreds of studies that prove that ultra processed diet cause a, a rapid increase in the um, weight of a patient. And that rapid increase will translate into obesity and obesity will translate into more arthritis. And obesity is also linked to cardiovascular diseases or diabetes or even depression. So that's why it's important what we eat. And many patients will ask me, so what is the best diet? Should I choose the low fat diet? Should I choose to go to Weight Watcher or should I choose the cabbage diet? Fat or too much fat or no fat or no carbs. And there are so many books, so many blogs written about the best diet, but actually I do not believe or I, I tell my patients or I educate my patients about looking at what they eat, not only as a necessity, but also uh, think about food as, as a social event sometimes and look at food as medicine because what we eat is what we are. So I teach my patients about what is important to know about food and how should they look at food. And many patients will come to me and will ask uh, me, so what should I use? What strategy is the best to use? Should I look at my plate and decide what to put on the plate? Or should I look at this as a pyramid? And I can tell you there is not a wrong way or a right way to do those things. But I think that it's also important what you put on that plate and how you, you, know, how you address your needs, your nutrition needs. So um, the other thing that I talk to my patients is about, um, it's about intermittent fasting. I think that many people heard about intermittent fasting, but they don't know exactly how to do that or if this is beneficial or not. And the truth is that there is a huge benefit of adopting an intermittent diet. For, for some people, for some people, they cannot um, follow this kind of, um, um, I would say this kind of approach they could try other things for sure. But, you know, when you look at studies that were done on intermittent fasting, it is proven that those people that approach their um, nutrition needs with intermittent fa fasting will end up with lower blood pressure and eventually lower appetite and increase insulin sensitivity, which will actually translate into less diabetes. 
And, you know, I want to point out towards a couple of things that I feel like they're so important for people with any type of inflammation, autoimmune diseases, and also to people that suffer from arthritis. And one of them that should be eliminated from your diet should be sugar. And as you all know, now sugar is everywhere, in the ham, in the bread, in pasta, everywhere there is added sugar. So that's why sugar it needs to be eliminated in into your diet. On top of that, all the processed food, I would urge my patients to cut down initially and then avoid the processed food because that is not only full of salt, which also affects the immune system, but it, it is also full in saturated fats, full in uh, omega-6 fatty acids, and it has a huge impact on our gut microbiome. And as I said before, that will increase the amount of inflammation. Also, I talk to my patients about the bad oils. There are so many companies that advertise their oils as healthy oils, like the corn or canola or sunflower, sunflower oil. They're all advertised as healthy, vegetable oils. But in fact, uh, when you fry your food with these oils, all the good fatty acids will transform into trans fats by frying. And that will make them very, very dangerous. And on top of that, the way that they are obtained using very strong solvents are also very detrimental to our health. So just to summarize things that you should avoid, number one, and I stress that on number one is sugar, number two, processed food, number three, trans fats. And um, I added four and five uh, also to emphasize the importance of excessive alcohol that can cause inflammation to our gut and smoking, which is actually linked to a lot of the autoimmune diseases and especially rheumatoid arthritis. That's, that's, um, that's a connection that many people do not make, but I always tell my patients with rheumatoid arthritis, if they are smoker, to stop smoking because smoking, not only that will um, um, you know, be bad for their health, increase the risk of cancer, but will also make them to respond to medication less or to actually have more aggressive disease. Those patients that are smoking, they actually have higher disease activity than others and do not smoke. And I talked to them about um, anti-inflammatory foods. And this, this will be a lecture itself, but I just wanted to point out a few of important things that you have to know. Anti-inflammatory foods are foods that are proven to decrease inflammation. And when I say proven to decrease inflammation, there were studies done that measured markers of inflammation like IL-6, which is an interleukin that is proven to, to be elevated in people with inflammation, but also C-reactive protein. And I love berries and I also encourage my patients to eat a lot of berries because um, I'm gonna give you a few examples, but blueberries, a cup of blueberries per day is proven to decrease inflammation. You know, there are studies that show that the interleukin-6, which is again, the marker of inflammation, will be decreased by adding a cup of blueberries per day or two cups of raspberries per day, again, proven to decrease inflammation. And um, 50 grams of strawberries per day are also shown to decrease inflammation and decrease pain. Isn't that amazing? I mean, uh, you just eat the right things and your levels of, levels of inflammation will be decreased. And people are also asking me about olive oil. I love olive oil and I recommend it all the time, but there are certain types of olive oils that you have to know are more beneficial. And I'm gonna give you here an example. The cold press and, and unfiltered olive oil is the one that you should use or add to your salad. So on top of that, there are some studies that prove that using olive oil to rub on your joints, again, to massage it on your joints in the morning, it's actually as good as using an anti-inflammatory cream. 
So this is, this is actually unbelievable. Just using olive oil to massage instead of using a cream with anti-inflammatory medication has the same effect. Um, I do find this fascinating. Okay, and then patients will ask me which diet is good. The vegetarian diet was proven to work for patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And there are actually some studies done in, you know, not very large amount, not very large number of people, but those people that were um, really strict about what they eat and they eat uh, only, um, you know, vegetables for a short period of time, they show to have uh, better outcomes than people that eat um, a regular diet. And I have so many things to tell you about the Mediterranean diet. I actually had another lecture where I talk about the Mediterranean diet and the benefits of Mediterranean diet. Uh, these are things that are proven. I don't have to stress on them, but I have to bring them in front of the patient. I already mentioned the benefits of the intermittent fasting. And this is a, a type of vegetarian vegetarian diet, it's called the ITIS diet, but it, it also incorporates um, fish, you know, into this diet. And it was tested recently in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, and it was shown to have beneficial effects. So the meat number four is related to exercise. A lot of patients will be very, very stressed about the fact that they will damage their joints if they exercise. And this is not true. You know, the exercise does not cause arthritis and the exercise does not make arthritis worse. And actually, exercise has absolutely great benefits for our health. Um, you know, not only that will increase the muscles, you know, many patients will say, oh, I, do, I don't do exercise, I don't wanna increase my muscle, but also it will decrease the adipose tissue, the visceral adipose tissue, which is proven to actually increase um, a lot of hormones. Those hormones will increase the appetite. So uh, if you exercise, if your appetite is less, you feel uh, less hungry. And uh, patients will ask me, so how much exercise is good or how much exercise is, is needed to address my needs? And I say to them, any exercise is better than no exercise. If you can start from five to 10 minutes of walking and gradually increase this exercise to 30 minutes, obviously um, for every other day or five days per week, that will be great. That will be your goal, but nobody expects you to start here and actually get to 30 minutes every day. So that's why I say to them, progress is better than um, perfect. You know, that's, that's something that I, I discuss with my patients. The fifth myth, and um, this is the last that we're gonna talk, is about stress. Um, is the fact that, uh, you know, people don't even think that stress will affect their arthritis, which is not true. Actually, stress, as I told you before, is very well connected with, our body and our brain is very well connected to the way that we feel and um, it's gonna impact the pain level. And people that are under a lot of stress chronically, they end up um, uh, having more inflammation and more pain. And again, this could be another lecture itself, but I just wanted to emphasize that chronic stress will lead to more inflammation, more depression, and more pain. And, um, you know, what are a few ways of uh, mitigating the stress? Many times I talk to my patients about how to incorporate mindfulness or breathing techniques, but even regular exercise, it's a way to um, address stress or to manage stress or simple social interaction. If you interact with other people, if you meet your friends, if you make new friends, that could also address the stress level. And as I told you, I am a strong believer in mindfulness. I teach my patients how to practice mindfulness because I think it's such a cheap way of treating stress or treating pain. And um, um, I also talk to patients about another way of addressing stress or another way of addressing sleep. How many of you actually 
notice the fact that after a night where you don't sleep well, your pain is worse, right? You have noticed that. And many of my patients will tell me the same way. They, they feel like sleep or chronic deprivation of sleep is impacting their level of pain. And this is true because uh, it was proven actually that chronic deprivation of sleep because of pain or because of stress, it's actually um, going to decrease the immune system. It's going to increase your appetite, but your level of energy will be low. So you cannot exercise, you will end up in more pain. And actually people that um, you know have pain for a long time and they don't sleep well also for a long time, they end up having other problems like diabetes or obesity. And I brought these diagrams to show you that um, you know, insufficient sleep will lead eventually to disease and um, will lead to decrease in the immune system. And also patients that are under a lot of stress, they release some uh, molecules that actually cause the sleep not to get uh, too refreshing. So when you have chronic inflammation, that will also end up in causing more uh, disturbance of your sleep. So that's why I thought that, you know, I'm teaching my patients, but why not spreading the word? Because I know many physicians are not doing that. Actually, I will tell you probably a hundred percent of my patients, they say to me that they have never had these discussions with their physicians. So that's why I thought to put together this course and I call it a complete guide for nutrition, exercise and mindfulness that is addressed to people that have arthritis, especially inflammatory arthritis. And because I like to do things that I, I do um, you know, well, I involve two amazing uh, people, Dr. Melissa Kale, who is a physical therapist. She's also a board, uh, board certified orthopedic clinical specialist. And she's also a Pilates instructor. But Melissa is also a patient that has Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and she adapted exercises for herself. Melissa did an amazing job. She designed uh, exercises specifically addressing the need of my patients with um, inflammatory arthritis. And on top of that, I involved uh, Dr. Elena Pradesco. She is also a psychologist, and she is a psychotherapist. She deals with patients in pain. Um, she's teaching classes for mindfulness and cognitive behavior therapy. Um, so the way that I designed the course was over eight weeks. It's gonna be um, both online, you can view the lectures, but have a, a live session every week with me where we address what it was discussed in that week. So the way that the course was designed is to address first the mindset, uh, kind of establish a foundation, understand where the problem comes from. And then I discuss a lot about nutrition. You have two weeks of very comprehensive lectures, stories from my patients, but also I teach you why, why is important to change things. And I teach you how to do those things. And then I teach you how to address pain management using mindfulness, sleep. And Melissa also designed two weeks of exercises for each part of the body. And in the end, in the last um, week, we put everything together and we deliver a plan that you can adjust for your days or you can adjust for your week or for your months. And I offer all the resources. And I can tell you that we, I mean, I collected probably 200, 300 um, um, very, very uh, well scientifically proved studies that show the benefits of doing those changes to your life. I design everything from grocery list to plans for a week, plan for a day. And I also included recipes, recipes for things that you can eat, recipes for things that you can, you know, incorporate or, or Melissa uh, did the same for exercises as well. And I'm really, really happy to share that with you. And um, 
I hope that those people that will decide on joining this course, uh, they will let me be part of their transformation and um, they will let me witness their smiles and um, they will feel better learning uh, about what is important to change to make them feel better. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop the screen, sharing the screen, and I'm going to take the questions. I'm very, very happy to take your questions. Yes, anybody that has questions or um, I have a question or a comment here in the chat about someone that has non-specific arthritis. And uh, he talks about also the fact that um, he had some thyroid issues um, and that he has sugar addiction that was very hard to manage. And actually I talk about sugar addiction in this course. It's, it's unbelievable. Sugar is very addictive. It's like cocaine. And it's very hard for people to stop eating things with sugar. And um, it's, it's a gradual uh, decrease in the amount of sugar. So it's very important to kind of, you know, start eliminating things. I, I can tell you a story of one of my patients that stopped to drink uh, soda. And just the fact that she stopped drinking soda, she started to improve that that gave her hope to address other things. So then she eliminated um, the uh, cookies that she was eating. She said to me, I was eating candies. I had a bowl of candies sitting on my desk and I eliminated that. I was able to eliminate that after I stopped uh, drinking uh, soda. Uh, so that's, that's very true. Uh, the other thing that um, uh, someone here says, how about nuts and seeds? I talk about nuts and the benefit of nuts. And I, I would like you to look up one of my lectures. I put a, a lecture about nutrition um, and it's on YouTube. And I also educate people about the benefits of eating nuts. I encourage all my patients that are eating, um, um, you know, they are not allergic to nuts to eat a, a handful of nuts every single day. They are incredible and the seeds also. Any other questions, please? You can write them in the chat if you are uh, shy, but this is an open discussion. So please feel free to ask your questions. Dr. Granita, it's Stephanie. How are you? Thank you for being here, uh, Stephanie. Yeah, so um, the program that you're talking about, you know, you and I have talked about this, you know, I. I was looking at Mayo Clinic. This is very simple. This program is, like you were saying, very similar to the Mayo program. Does does your pro, for everybody who's here? Does your program start at any time, or is it yes. is there a date certain that you're going to start it, or how does that yes. how does that all work? So I will release the program mm -hmm. on um, February twenty eighth. And um, every week, as I said, you're going to have a live lecture with me. And every week I'm going to release the, the videos. You can look at them at your own time when you are comfortable watching them and start applying those things in your life. Uh, again, this is spread out over the course of eight weeks because I thought that, you know, you know how it is in, in the regular practice. You have to see someone. And then at the end of the visit, you try to incorporate, crump up something uh, about this or about that. But I think that it's important for people to take their time, kind of digest those things and learn at their leisure. And I know people are motivated to learn, but they just needed the right resources and, you know, the right... I would say the right information because there is information everywhere. There is an explosion of information. But when I started to think about this program, I didn't even know about the Mayo program. And then I compare mm -hmm. my program with Mayo and I was amazed that I teach the same thing. And nobody told me about their program. No, I didn't even know. I know they don't teach, they teach just a part of what I teach. Um, but they try to incorporate in, in three weeks and um, you know. They keep people there, but there is no follow up after that. And you don't have any right. access to their lectures after that. So it's gone. Once you see it, you don't have access. And 
I decided with my team here, I decided to give access to these lectures lifelong. So you get them, you keep them, you use them or reuse them when you need them. You don't have to be, mm -hmm. you know, to pay again, or I, I don't think this is, and my, my main goal here is to bring my knowledge to people in such a way that will be, you know, digestible, but also to be able to come back to review those lectures. Yep. And then what's the time commitment per day? Do you Oh, I think you can do it in an hour or something mm -hmm. like that. It's not, it's not a day. You can watch, uh, you know, some weeks they have 20 lectures, some weeks they have 10 lectures, but I try to keep the lectures small. Um, so some are between five minutes and the longest is 20 minutes, but I yeah. was told, you know, keep it shorter, keep it shorter. So most of the lectures are about 10 minutes. So if mm -hmm. you just listen to that 10 minutes on the way or, you know, you can listen anywhere you want, anywhere you would be, you can listen to that and, and just try to incorporate one at a time. You know, it's a, it's a journey. And I always tell, and I'm teaching that in the, in the course too, we decided to, to do the teaching based on the smart method or smarter method. And I think that people should be aware about choosing things, doing small changes, uh, but sustainable, um, and they should be accountable. And even if it's not perfect, go back and retry to do those things. And I offer myself to be live on these sessions because I know questions will arise and I know patients need guidance or people need guidance and, and they don't have to sign up to be part of my practice because that was the other thing. I had patients that they came to me and said, I want to take the integrative medicine part, but I don't want to become, I'm not a patient, okay? And I'm fine with that. And that's why I designed those course to kind of offer my knowledge to others. Yes. Did I answer the question? You did. And then you looks like you got another question coming in on yes, osteoarthritis. I Yes, I have an osteoarthritis patient that asked me, is there anything I can do to manage my pain? Yes, all of those things that I talked about, uh, you know, all of these techniques to manage pain through mindfulness, through, you know, improving the sleep, through uh, maintaining a weight, a normal weight or modifying the weight, all of this will be very helpful. There are many studies that show that just decreasing five pounds, five pounds, which is you know, things, people, when they look at five pounds, some of my patients, they say, oh, I can do that. Five pounds will expand the life of your joints with at least five years. Let's say you have osteoarthritis of the knees, which is very, very frequent. Just the fact that you expand the life of your knees with five years, I think that's amazing because you can have one replacement, uh, but the second one or the third one will be very difficult. So if you can postpone that event for later in life, that's that's much better. I have um, Frank. Do you want to ask a question? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Doctor Gernita. I don't. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. You can um, call me Doctor G because a lot okay. of patients uh, they have difficulties. We blame my husband for that. Well, I'm not Dr. G. I'm just Frank. So, right. but I, uh, I wanted to ask you about nightshade vegetables. Are they, um, do you think, feel like they're really significant in terms of inflammation? I've heard, I've heard really contrasting views on this. Like some people say tomatoes absolutely go for, you know, include them in your diet because they have a certain uh, nutritional component that's important, but other people are like, no, that's one of the worst things you can add to include in your diet. And it's so much a part of my diet. You know, I, I eat pasta a lot. Um, and I know that this is probably contributing to some of my overweight issue, mm -hmm. but um, I re prefer to modify it rather than eliminate it. Um, and that's what I believe too. I believe that if you decrease certain things from your diet could be beneficial. I'm not, a, I'm not an advocate for taking 
everything out. You know, I hear patients that will go straight to gluten-free without being sensitive to gluten or patients that uh, will eliminate all the meat from their diet. And I'm not for that. I think that if you adjust things to uh, what you feel is making you better, um, that's the best way to go. There are certain things that will create more inflammation and nightshades of vegetables are some of them, but you can replace that with like, let's say tomatoes, you can replace with um, let's say cucumbers or um, there are, you know, in the course I make, uh, I, ha I have designed a, um, a template of things that you can replace to, like you can replace um, this with that or this with that. So mm -hmm. I give all this information for people to, to try it, to have ideas, because that's another thing. You find information, but you don't know how to incorporate that information. So that's, that's part of the teaching, you know, not only why you need to change those things, but also how to apply it to be sustainable, to maintain that over a long period of time. Also, are there specific types of exercise that I, you know, I love to swim, but occasionally if I swim a little too much, my entire body will respond in pain, you know, uh, that will keep me from exercising for weeks. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I realize that part of the problem is figuring out the right level of exercise so that I don't create inflammation that uh, deters me from further exercise or or even dissuades me from participating in anything athletic at all um but if you'd speak to that kind of challenge yeah and and uh maybe preferred types yoga too i i know everybody says do yoga do yoga and i'll go to yoga and then i guess i overdo it or something and everything ends up inflamed and I'm like, I don't like yoga, <laughs> you know, and I know there's so many different types of yoga. And I guess I've just not found the right kind or, you know, the gentle type. Two things that you mentioned here, one is swimming and the second one is yoga. Swimming actually is the best type of exercise for people with arthritis. Why? Because, um, and probably my patients heard me about talking about that, the water takes the pressure of your body. So in the water, you are a little bit anti-gravitational and you don't exert the same amount of weight on your joints. So, and that not only that will relax the muscles. So the warm water, not the cold water, but swimming or walking in a therapeutic pool with a little bit warmer water will achieve two things. Number one, it's going to make you feel better because your muscles will get more relaxed. The warm water will relax the muscles, but also that water will uh, strengthen your muscles too, because walking in the water will, you know, you have to um, uh, move. So you will exert it, exert it the, the muscles. So you will achieve uh, two benefits in the same place. Yoga, the same. Yoga will help you strengthen certain types of muscles. It will make you more focused, uh, but you have to find the right uh, type of exercises that you can do and stick with something that is comfortable for you. There is not a perfect recipe for um, um, everybody. Doesn't exist something like that. And that's why when Melissa worked on the exercises, um, she, you know, she has the experience of working with people with arthritis. And that's why she adjusted things. She did very simple exercises, but very powerful. And you just have to do it like, let's say five minutes a day and then expand to seven minutes a day for, you know, and that, that should be gradual. Let's, let's say for two weeks, you do an exercise that is five minutes a day. And then for the next two weeks, you're gonna do the same exercise or a different one for seven minutes. And then um, for nine minutes or 10 minutes, but you should do that gradually, that kind of exercise. Don't expect that you're gonna go in and run the marathon. There's nothing like that. But doing consistent types of exercise and working different kind of muscle groups will help you in the long-term run. And that's why Melissa does all this part. I gave away all the 
control because I've seen what she designed for her own practice. And I was, I have to tell you, I was impressed with the level of professionalism that um, this physical therapist invested in doing those exercises. I just follow that by saying, yeah, hydrotherapy, specifically mm -hmm. warm water baths, or, you know, even with, uh, oh, jets, you know, if I can find something with jets, that's one of the most relaxing modalities uh, that I found. However, when I'm in serious pain or inflammation, I, ice is actually, ice will stop it like nothing else. So, mm -hmm. and I see that professional athletes will often take an ice bath immediately after exercise. And also I was in physical therapy for a while and ice was used, you know, they put me through the regimen of stretching and doing exercises on specific areas that had been injured. And then they would almost always follow that with a treatment of ice uh, for yeah. maybe 10 minutes. So I'm going to tell you the difference between hot and cold. You know, I get ah. these questions all the time. So patients will ask me, what is good? Should I use heating pad or should I use uh, like the ice pack? And the answer is you can use both, not at the same time, of course, but you can use them for different purposes. Ice will always numb the nerve termination. So they will decrease the pain, but that is temporary, okay? You cannot keep ice for a long time on your skin because you're gonna, you know, you're gonna feel pain eventually. But, you know, a short amount of time, you can, for a short amount of time, you can use ice, which will numb the pain or will numb the nerves. And that's why the pain gets better. That's why we use the biofreeze spray, okay? On the other hand, a warm or heating bed it's used to relax the muscles because what's happening when you have pain, your muscles get contracted. And let's say you have pain in the back, okay? Your muscles are very, very contracted and they pull the spine. And pulling the spine is gonna pull the nerves and it's gonna cause more pain. So what you're gonna use at that point, you're gonna use heat, which will relax those muscles and that will prevent uh, the, the further uh, pain. Thank so you. that's this the is, difference. This has been helpful. Uh, what's the cost of the program? I'm, I'm sure you're going to tell us. Yes. So we have, uh, this is the first time when we start and we are very interested to spread the word. So for the next week, we uh, decided to give a 50% off of this program is um, all together was six ninety nine, but we offer it for three hundred and fifty, something like that. Thank and you. you know, you, if you're not happy with what you get, you know, in thirty days you get your money back. If you're not happy with what you you're gonna find in the program, I doubt it. Believe me, because I we put so much effort into this, and um, we collectively worked to you know, make it affordable, first of all, uh, that was the first intention, and then spread the word, because we believe, all of us, uh, we believe that there are so many people in pain, so many people that are just moved from one doctor to another, uh, you know, they, they just get a pill and move out, and they try to get better, but they end up in situations where there are people that are not professionally um, well prepared, I would say, and they give advices where they empower themselves as health coaches or, you know, expert into this or expert into that. We don't do that. We literally, um, you know, I was the one who started all this idea, but I brought people that are very knowledgeable to help me. I believe that um, it's, it's important for people to have the right information, scientifically based and scientifically proven to get the best benefit. It's just a matter of involving, um, having you know, the commitment. I always tell my patients, you have to be committed to change things and you will feel better when you, you decide. You know, I don't decide for my patients, but when my patients decide that it's time to change something, 
I see their transformation. I, I can tell you that I've, I've seen and I've treated you know, thousands of patients with inflammatory arthritis in my life and um, working closely with patients that are motivated prove me that, um, you know, whatever I said to them, it was working. And, you know, the science and even the big centers, they try to implement the same things, but there are not many centers that they have this integrative approach, very few centers. And I look into the Mayo Clinic Center and I was so shocked to see how much they, they you know, um, first of all, it's very hard to get into the program. And then second, they charge, an enormous amount of money, I believe. Well, thank you. This has been up. very oh, sorry. helpful. Sorry. So, um, I'm sorry. Stephanie. Dr. Dubay, you're going to send a um, link around for registration. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, Excellent. yes, yes. Um, so um, I work with, uh, with someone that designed this type of emailing because I'm not good at, any, at everything. <laughs> so uh, Shankar is, uh, is probably... Um, He's the one who knows how to deal with that. But, you know, I stick to what I know to do best and I give, uh, I give the Caesar what, what he deserves. I, thank you for this. This has been very helpful. And I hope to, you know, if I can find time and uh, the inclination, I, which I think I have, then I will, uh, I'll try to join the program. I think I didn't see in the program but maybe it could be included or maybe it is included just a section on self-advocacy for people with chronic pain oh, arthritis because yes. it seems to be the most empowering thing to be able yes. to say to people i can't do that i need time yes. to do this we did cetera. that too we did okay. that too right. so the course will build up a community of the people that us there that join the course and I want these people to join and um, empower themselves. So those people that are part of the course will have their own community of people and they will you know, empower themselves, they will help themselves, they will share their stories. I encourage you know, people to share their story and they share the, even a recipe. You know, I did a salad. I share with my patients how to do yogurt, if you can believe it or not, or I share with my patients how to do cabbage salad or something simple. But I want patients or people that join this program to be part of a community. So I'm gonna build that too. So this is part of the program too. I'm glad you mentioned it because I didn't thought, um, I didn't thought about presenting that. Anybody else, any questions? Shankar, do you have a question? I don't really have a question. Uh, I feel like, you know, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis in 2002, and somehow I, um, I did everything you have covered in your course. I discovered that on my own out of necessity and out of pain. But I mean, nowadays, I live, like I'm healthier than most of, like 98% of my peers, you know, and I, I exercise, I have very, very low pain levels. Um, when I make an exception with sugar or something I shouldn't do, I notice it the following day and then I behave again and everything is good. So all I can say is that what you have exposed today is working and uh, is very rare to see a physician actually present a long-term solution that ultimately is in the per person's hand, you know, not in your hands. You know, you're just sharing information and then it's up on us to, to apply it. But it's something that works and I'm very grateful that you choose to do this and I will definitely, um, help you, you know, I always spread the word and uh, it's, it's just gonna change people's lives. Thank you very I much. I didn't talk to Shankar before. Oh he no. He can testify on that. <laughs> I didn't even know that he's gonna show up here. And I wanna thank you for sharing your story. He actually shared his story at some point with me when we met, um, you know, I believe last year we talked, but on a different yeah. topic. And he yeah. shared his story with me. 
And I told him at that point that this is the story that I hear all the time. And all I'm trying to do is change the way that people look at their life and change the way that people look at their disease. Um, yeah. I hate, I hate when I see a patient that comes to my practice and say, I'm a lupus patient or I'm a rheumatoid arthritis patient. And I always stop them and I say, no, you are a person and you know your disease is part of your life, but you shouldn't yeah. put the label on you. And I, I'm so grateful you join us and you share your story to tell people that you know, things that I talk about are valuable and they can change the life for, you know, many years. Yeah, and, and let me also add to that, that five other specialists in the field told me at various moments of my journey that I was going to be paralyzed, that I was going to be in a wheelchair if I didn't start very, very um, strong medication for life. And I never did. However, what I did, and that was my personal approach, I became a vegan. I'm a vegan of over 10 years. And that was the key, uh, one of the big keys uh, to me, right? So um, I want to let the, the other uh, attendees here on the call know that, you know, miracles are possible if you apply knowledge uh, as such as uh, is it presented in this course. I am absolutely uh, convinced and I'm living proof that it is possible. And yes, I wasn't paid for this and I'm not a patient of Dr. Nope. Granita. We're just connected through a, a movement uh, in medicine called Free Market uh, Medical Association. But other than that, I was really just curious to see uh, what you would talk about tonight. Thank you. Uh, Bobby, do you have questions? Uh, no, I don't, thank you. You are very welcome. Um, if you um, don't have any, anything else, any other questions, I'm really, really happy that you took the time to be here with me. And um, um, if there is anything else that I can help you with, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much. And I wish you a very good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.